Welcome to Atanasda, Chapter 3, Beta, in which we learn plural nouns. We'll talk about both forms and accents. So, plural noun forms. If you recall, there are three paradigms for noun forms. The first, second, and the third declensions. For now, we have only learned the second declension. That means that for now, every noun you learn will follow the patterns that we're about to cover. The second declension nouns can either be masculine or neuter, and there are slight differences in the two. So to review the masculine, uh, we have our five cases, same five cases in the plural. We learned the singular forms in chapter two. So ho agros, tu agru, to agro, ton agron, and o agre. Now we're going to learn the plural forms. We've already seen some of these in the readings. We've seen that the plural definite article for the masculine is hoi, and for the accusative is tus. We've even seen the full phrase tus agrus before. And for the nominative, the form is agroi, hoi agroi. We'll also learn in this chapter the genitive, ton agron, and the dative, tois agrois. The vocative is o agroi. If you're wondering why the accents change, you'll notice, let's look first at the singular only. Um, that when the ultima is short, it's an acute accent, so agros, agron, and agre. And if the ultima is long, it changes to a circumflex, agru and agro. Now, the same rules apply in the plural, except for lots of things have happened that basically look at, look, make it look like the rules have been violated. So on and ois in the genitive and dative uh, follow what you'd expect. The ultima looks long, is long, and has a circumflex. For the other three, the ultima looks long, but there's actually historical linguistic reasons why it's treated as short. So in other words, the words that used to have different forms, it was short, they've changed over time, but they still pretend that the syllables are short. So we get agroi and agrus and agroi. Over in Neuterland, we've learned our sample noun todendron and the singular forms. Recall that the neuter nominative and the accusative are always the identical form. So todendron and todendron. The vocative is, has its own pretend definite article, not really a definite article, but it shares the same noun ending form as the nominative and accusative. Dendron. You'll notice in this particular word, there's an acute accent on the penult. And when the acute accent is on the penult, it stays there and never changes. Doesn't matter that the ultima is changing from long to short. So in the plural, our nominative plural form is ta dendra. And as you'd come to expect, the accusative is identical in form, ta dendra. The vocative gets its own pretend definite article, but the noun form copies the nominative and accusative. Oh, dendra. After that, the genitive and the dative are identical to the masculine. Ton, dendron, and tois, dendrois. Again, with this particular noun, there's an acute accent on the penult, and no rules change anything about that. It just remains an acute accent on the penult the whole time. So now let's take a look at uh, accents. Um, we say, as we learned in chapter two, that the accent on a noun is persistent, which means that you memorize it where it is, as it is in the nominative form, and then it might change. And by change, I mean where the accent is, which syllable the accent is might change, or you could change from an acute to a circumflex, depending on the following rules. So number one, if you have an acute on the anti-penult, it will move to the penult if the ultima is long. So for example, ho anthropos, um, you'll notice that it has an acute on the anti-penult and you memorize it as is in the nominative case. You'll notice that the ultima happens to be short. But then when we change to the genitive, you'll see that the ultima is now long. So the rule says if ultima is long, then the acute on the antipenult has to move to the penult. So we get ho anthropos, but tu anthropu. Next rule, if there is a circumflex on the penult, 
it becomes an acute if the ultima is long. So for example, hooikos, we have a circumflex on the penult. You'll notice that the ultima happens to be short. When we change to the genitive, tu oiku, now the ultima is long, and the rule says if the ultima is long, then that circumflex on the penult has to become an acute. So we get ho oi kos, but tu oiku. Those are the rules in short, but if you want to go to the next slide, we'll do the whole declension of ho anthropos and ho oi kos. So, ho anthropos, here's all of your definite articles, here's all of your nouns without any accents, and now let's start looking at the rules in detail. So again, we're concerned with uh, short ultimas versus long ultimas. So you'll notice, again, looking just at the singular, that the nominative singular, accusative singular, and vocative singular have a short ultima. And so the acute accent remains on the antipenult. Ho anthropos, ton anthropon, and o anthrope. Now let's look at what happens in the singular when the ultima becomes long in the genitive and dative singular. So the rule says that that acute accent must move from the antipenult to the penult. So we get tu anthropu and to anthropo. Now again, the rules do apply to the plural, but so many changes have happened to the words over time that it looks like it's violating the rules. So oi is treated as short, even though you'd think it'd be long. So we have hoi anthropoi and o anthropoi. And then now, unlike before, us is suddenly treated as long again. So we get tus anthropus. And um, it's obviously long in the genitive plural and the dative plural. So we get ton anthropon and tois anthropois. I highly recommend that you simply memorize where the accents are in these words rather than trying to remember which ones have changed from short to long and long to short over time. So now let's look at ho, oi, ho, oi, kos. Again, I've written them here uh, without the accents. You learn what it is and where it is in the nominative, and then you apply rules for the rest of them. So in the singular, we have the short ultima, so that circumflex gets to remain, ton, oi, kon, and O oi ke. But then the genitive and dative singular, it's now a long ultima, so that circumflex on the first syllable has to change to an acute. Tu oiku and to oiko. Again, with the plural, uh, even though oi looks long, it's treated as short. So ho hoi oi koi and o oi koi. And then the other three look long and are treated as long. So we get ton oikon, tois oikois, and tus oikus. That's it for now. See you next time.